And we're back this morning with another episode of your best life ever in 2020. I know some of you are questioning that at this point. Is this really our best life in 2020? Well, for some it is and for some it isn't. So uh, I'm Judy Best with EXP Realty. And today we're talking about telling your own story. So if you've been thinking about being a writer and telling your own story or maybe just being a speaker and telling your own story. That's what we're talking about today. So what's uh, the question I want to ask you, whether you're watching this live or um, watching it post by video is um, what is your favorite type of book that you read? What kind of books do you like to read? And I would love to hear your responses to that. Uh, and so start dropping in what kind of books you like to read while I introduce my guests today. Uh, I'm Judy Best with EXP Realty, and uh, I help people buy and sell their houses. But during the week on these Facebook Lives, my whole purpose is just to add value back to you as a community. And to, today, my guest is Kim McPherson. She is a Conway native. She's lived there her whole life. And uh, she's a published author. She has published 13 books. Only eight of them are available at this time, but um, some of them were limited editions for nonprofits. And so that was a fabulous way you could give back to the community. Yes. Um, she has her own business called Bestseller Bound, and she has a, a group of that community here on Facebook. So you can go like her page, Bestseller Bound, and you can join her community. Uh, best power ground bound. Uh, one of the things she does is she helps people get their story out and then get it published with all without being um, hoodwinked by all these people out there that's trying to tell you this is how you do it and they try to get your money um, and then you don't have a book published or you get it published and it's not published in a way that people know about it. Um, so Kim is has got this all figured out, and I'm so glad that she's with me today. She's a friend of mine from um, a women's group that we're both part of, and we've become good friends. Say hi, Kim. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm an author, as as Judy was saying. Uh, I write romance novels um, under the pen name Cassandra Clay. Um, I started this six years ago and did not know what I was doing. It was kind of one of those things where uh, I could say tomorrow that I'm going to run a marathon and it's not going to happen because I don't know how. And I jumped in thinking I could figure this out and thought it would just work and it didn't. So I spent the last six years trying to really learn and educate myself, attending conferences and things like that to learn the proper way to do this uh, mm -hmm. so that I don't, so that others and myself moving forward don't make all the mistakes that I made in the beginning. And I love it. I love the book industry. I love books. I'm obsessed with books <laughs> yes. and, and I love helping others um, write their story or write whatever it is they, they're passionate about and uh, getting it out there to the public and also avoiding the predatory practices that are out there um, that can actually hurt an author, not help an author. Right. Now, I know you formed, formed a partnership or is it a partnership with Eden Books? Yes, ma'am. It's a, a partnership slash collaboration with Eden Books. Eden Books is an online book retailer. Uh, they are strictly romance and women's literature. And mm -hmm. so it's basically taking one genre and um, making it available on one platform. And also everyone is included. It doesn't matter what type of romance you write. All, uh, all of the subgenres in romance are accepted. Everyone's included. Um, and it's a great, it's a great opportunity and a great collaboration. And she, the Robin Crawford, the CEO is, you know, a well as female entrepreneur. So it's really great that we get to come together as mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and help women. I help men too, but it's all. Well, I was going to say, you have some men who are clientele, yes. I know as well. I have, yes, I have men that are author, uh, author clients as well, but it is exciting to be a partnership where I can help women. And there are men authors that write romance. So, but right. romance is usually primarily women. And that's your audience is usually primarily women. It would be interesting to read a, a romance novel written by a man. I would love to have a really good male authors. So maybe you can recommend one because it would be a different perspective, right? 
Yeah, it is. And I, um, oh, and I just, I just lost his name. I'll, I'll, it'll get back to me, but yeah, I'm actually friends with one. Um, and I think he writes good ones. Um, I'm actually more drawn to the female written ones than the men ones. I don't know. And I think it's because I write it, you know, per se, Right. but, um, but yeah, there's a few of them out there, uh, that are, uh, they're actually doing well. And I, the guy that I talked to, I cannot write his name. I now, who's your favorite women authors then? Oh, okay. That's easy. <laughs> the one I'm a Nora guy, Roberts girl. Yeah. Nora Roberts. Um, I, I have actually seen Nora Roberts. I didn't get to meet her at a conference, but I've seen her. Mm-hmm. Um, but my two are Sylvia Day and Meredith Wilde. They are the ones that got me started. And they wow. are like my idols. I have met Sylvia Day twice. Um, it was amazing. Uh, and I've not yet met Meredith Wilde. I have spoken to her. We have communicated on social media uh, several cool. times. She's very, she's very open to talking to me and stuff like that. So that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty awesome. And I admire her. She has her own publishing company. So I, I, I love mm-hmm. watching what she's posting and uh, seeing the things that she's doing. Well, and it's so. fun to, that now that they've published a lot of books and they're giving back and you're following that same example as you're giving back. Uh, mm-hmm. It's very exciting. So yes. um, now how long did you know that you wanted to be an author before you started writing, Kim? Um, probably, probably about six months after I started reading it. Like I've read books, but I didn't read romance. I went to college late in life. And I remember there was a very famous romance novel that was out that everybody was into. And it was called Fifty Shades of Grey. And yes. that's not what my interest was. What my What bothered me was I was in school and I could not be a part. Like everybody was having book clubs and get mm-hmm. togethers and meeting and having social time. And because they were all reading the book. So it's kind of like a mm-hmm. girls not out book club. And it, it was happening at work because I was working full time, going to school. It was happening with my friends and I could not be a part of it. because I didn't have time to read that book. And I remember, t- I remember my husband asking me, what do you want for graduation when you finish college? And I said, I want a Kindle. I want a Kindle. Right. I said, because I want to read. I want to know what all this hype is about, about these romance. And, I, and, I, and that was not the first. And the funny thing was, I got it. I got it for graduation. Um, he actually gave it to me early and he gave me a gift card to Amazon. It was not the first book I read. I actually read Sylvia Day first um, okay. and was hooked. Uh, and then about after I, I kind of started going through her books and Meredith Wilds, and I was reading like as much as like every night because I was mm-hmm. just. I needed an escape from like the stress of of school finally being gone. I needed something to kind of calm mm-hmm. me down. And so I just started reading and about six months in these ideas started coming like, well, what if you wrote a romance novel about this? Or what if you wrote a romance novel about that? So I just started jotting down notes and within six months I was writing. That is so cool. That was, yeah. That was six years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah. when I was a little girl, <clears throat> My mother took us um, to the library continually. The library was a weekly field trip with me and my brother. And then my other brother, when he was born many years later. But so I was exposed to a lot of literature as a child. And I believed that I would be an author someday. And if you ask me at any point in my life, I would tell you the one thing I haven't done yet is write a book. Um, I will tell you now that I'm not sure that's what I really want to do is write a book because I love telling my story. Exactly. And I feel like um, that's I'm more expressive doing that than I I don't think I'm as good a writer because you've got to use very expressive words and um, you write your vision. And I think I speak my vision better than I write it. Well, there there is a there is a technique that you could use to do this. Okay. So you could transcribe it. So you could record it, and there are there's software out there, or you can use Word and you can voice dictate. Hmm. So interesting. You're, you're, yeah. you're going to coach so me writing writing yeah. my first book here. Yeah. yeah it's funny. <laughs> there's there's one called Dragon, and it's called Dragon Dictation, and you have to train your dragon that we call it. Oh yeah. So that it's adapted to your voice, and that's 
you know, Dragon and I just love each other because of my southern accent. So, so we battle, we battle a little bit, but um, I do use it a lot of times. If an idea comes to me and I'm in the car, I hit, I just pull out my my voice recorder on my phone, yeah, and I'll say, okay, this da 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 da, and um, then I'll just have Ooh. Dragon dictate my notes. Um, if I'm sitting in front of the computer, you can let Word do it. Word has a dictation button yeah. where as long as you're sitting in front of the computer, um, you could do it that way. So I, I do that. I'm to describe time. that. Yes. Well, so we have idea. some tips for people who are thinking, like I was thinking, that I should write a book. And I'm sure that you're not just, um, you're not focused on one genre, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can help anybody that wants to write a book from a nonfiction book to a children's book to a fiction yes. book, whatever, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So, okay. Um, before we go there, again, tell us what your favorite um, favorite genre of literature is to read. We okay. want to know what you like to read because I'm just interested if, if uh, people will say something about that. Okay, so obviously romance, that's my that's my contemporary romance. That's my jam, as I would say. Uh -huh. um, but also, I love, I'm really, because of the fact that I'm an entrepreneur, I'm loving the self-help and business book. So mm -hmm. nonfiction, self-help and business, I am loving it. I love it, um, especially in Audible. Uh, yes. I love in Audible. Yes, me too. Yes. Um, I don't like to... Oh, romance in Audible. <laughs> right. Well, and I do, I read and listen to romance. If I'm on a long road trip and I'm by myself, I'll be playing. If I'm not wanting to educate myself, I'm usually listening to a romance novel. But mm. when I'm listening to a business book, I want the Audible or a self-help because I want to be able to take notes. Right. Yes. So, so that's, that's why, but those are definitely, and I'm actually, and you should say this, I'm actually writing a self-help for authors on Ooh. basically yeah and that's I, I can't say much more than that because that's okay we can I, look forward to it yeah well and I don't know if I'm going to publish it or not um it may oh, be okay. up to somebody else to publish it we that's 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 a thought well, it might be part of that. your online coursework right maybe maybe so that's we'll see there's, there's a couple different out you know, avenues that that may fit into I'm not sure yet yeah but um Definitely. But that's, I'm real excited about it because it's, it's not just process and teaching you, walking you through. It's also some empowerment, encouragement, motivation to write. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get hung up in their head and they can't move forward with their writing. And so I want to make sure that that piece is prevalent in the book. Yeah. So that's, that's something I'm working on. Well, I like romance, but I like it okay. to have um, some drama or mystery to it. Yeah. Suspense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some suspense. Or and I and I also like um, the mindset books, especially is what I've been paying attention to in recent years. And um, as a Christian, of course, I like the Christian literature that's oh, yes. out there. Uh, but that all of that said, I if a good book to me is just a good book, and if it catches me in that first chapter, we'll go all the way. It hurts me to start a book and lay it down. So uh, to me, a book is to be read and I don't have a pile by my bedside. I have one book ahead, but I have a Kindle and I love my Kindle just like you. It's like a really great thing. Well, let's let's give them some tips. The first tip that you said was using your own voice is very important. So can you explain that? Yes. So a lot of a lot of writers, a lot of authors, there's there's a technical side to writing, like you're, there's craft and things like that, and all of that is good, and it's it should be a part of your book. But we get so hung up in that that we lose our voice. We're more focused on am I writing it correctly than am I conveying my message? And in my opinion, voice and message trump technical craft writing any day of the week. Um, if you writing from your voice is how you convey that message. And if you, if you focus on the technical, you will lose that. And that is like, I am such a proponent of that using your voice because nobody's going to tell that story or nobody's going to share that information no better than you are. And you've right. got to write it that way. And so I'm a very huge proponent. And, and as far as 
some people get mad at me when I say that, you know, that voice trumps technical craft writing. That's what editors are for. Um, the editors come mm -hmm. in after you're finished. Sure. They will help you clean up that manuscript and, and work on that. And they will, they'll, they can, you'll learn some techniques just through the editing, but never let tra craft or technical writing trump your voice because that's, that's what inspires people. That's what gets the message across. Wow. And I'm a big proponent of that. Yeah. Well, I was one of the readers for Sharon Keithley's Colors of Deceit. I love that book. <laughs> that I read. Um, she, that her type of literature right there is mm -hmm. what I love. Yes. Uh, what I described earlier. So Colors of Deceit by Sharon Keithley. If you haven't picked that up for your Kindle or as a paperback, um, get it. And Sharon will sign it for you. She's a friend of mine. She's probably listening. Um, so we're, uh -huh. you know. You got to do it. But okay. her voice came across so well in that book. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that the first read that I had of it, I, I recognize what you're saying. Her technical craft probably wasn't as strong in that first as it was like two or three edits later mm -hmm. when I read it again. Because I read it over and over again because I loved it. <laughs> and when I brought it out. It was published. I read it again. Oh yeah. We worked and I worked with her some on that book. So that was very exciting yeah. for me to, to see her be able to do all that. But yeah. I knew I mean, you were you were coaching her through it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it yes. took her about six months, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. she started I started a writer's writing meetup in August and and she came to the first one and that's when she started. So she started kind of putting the ideas together. If I, if I recall, and if I'm wrong, Sharon correct me on that, but I believe it was August. <laughs> she started if I remember, she started, she wrote it fast, very fast. Yeah, I, it was, it's a good story. So, um, but finding your own voice and using your own voice, it's, it's important. Um, whether you're writing a short story, whether you're writing your, uh, it's one of the reasons that teachers can tell that your paper's been plagiarized when yes. you don't use your own voice because they know how you talk, they know how you would write the story. And so when somebody else writes it, your voice isn't there, right? Right. Well, and, and that's that's a thing. I, I, I'm i not a big fan of ghostwriters. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest reason actually is because there's a lot of, you could put yourself in a massive liability issue where a ghostwriter, we, there's, a, there's one in particular romance author who had a, she entered a book for an award thing for Romance Writers of America and she, the ghostwriter plagiarized the work and the oh. author it and claimed it as her own. And so there's not good. no, so I'm from the legal side of a ghostwriter and from the lack of your voice expression, I'm not a fan. Now, if some people need it, I understand that they just can't get it out without one, but I, I just, I'm just a proponent of using your own voice and doing it yourself. Well, and I think that that's part of being an author is having a voice that should be heard. Yes. So that takes us to our second tip, mm -hmm. which is your story is actually a gift to other people. Yes. That, mm -hmm. that you have to give them. Yes. And I, and, and this is a great tool that I used for those that don't that want to write, but then they, they make the excuses not to because some of it's self-esteem and I understand that some of it is um, fear, things of that nature. And um, I've said this many times, if you don't write that book, you're denying your gift to others. And that gift could help somebody, whether even if it's a fiction novel, there is opportunity to um, you're entertaining. But there's also a story that could that story could help somebody. I have from fiction novels, romance fiction novels have there have been stories that have really touched me and helped me. Right. So if you have the passion to write, whether it, no matter what it is. Um, don't deny people your story or gift. Um, that that's just I just think that it's something you should always push forward and do because you yeah. never know who's going to benefit from it. Well, and that goes for any again any story you have to tell, whether it's a children's book, a romance, a mystery, or a um, nonfiction book. It's yes. any books I I consider um, reading an essential part of my life. Yes. And if I didn't have that, um, I started to say outlet, 
but it is, it's, if I didn't have that in my life, mm-hmm. um, it affects my mood. It affects my personality. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it affects how I relate to others. If I have not been reading for a while, um, I'm a different person than I am when I've been in stories and I come out of them. Um, it gives me joy. It sparks joy for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I know when I, when I first got into it, you know, like I would, it was an escapism for me to be able to step aside, forget about the world and dive into a book and not be worried about anything else going on. Um, and I still, to this day, I, I mean, I love it, but I still use it as my time, my personal time to sit down and read and enjoy. Um, and I'm, and even the, the help books and the business books, I still take that as, even though it's work related, I still enjoy that time. Yeah. Just having like, it's a peaceful time for me. Um, and, and it's, and it's, there's, there's so much data out there and so much scientific research books mm-hmm. stimulate brain function. They increase, um, your your ability to comprehend and speak and things like that, it, it increases your brain power. So it doesn't matter what it is. As long as you're reading, you're stimulating your brain. There you go. Well, and one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you during this season is because um, we've lost many of our outlets of expression right. in our self-isolation during this yeah. time. And for some people, um, Another, this is the perfect time to nurture your writing. Um, You've thought about being an author. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to start. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now you have the time. Right. You may not have had time before. You have the time. now. And and I've had some people say, well, I'm working from home. I have my kids and all that. That's fine. But and and you've got to do all that. But what what happens at nine o'clock at night when the kids are in bed? There's your time. Five in the morning when you woke up, right? Exactly. You can spend an hour. If you could dedicate an hour a day or an hour three days a week, um, you can do this. If it, it jot notes, like I said, record ideas and notes down um, because you've just got to take the, the notes and the, the ideas here. And you've got to get them out. So um, and that's the first thing is to just write it down ultimately write it down if you have to record it first that's fine uh, but you got to start somewhere so if an idea comes to you then you write it down you know you have to the, the goal is to go from the mind to the page you got to get it from the brain to the page um, and all you're doing is ideas that are coming in your head you're free writing you're brainstorming you're just if this is not you're not writing um, this is my final manuscript you are working on phase one phase one is brainstorming free writing and just write the things that you know what's and i and i've used this example before if you're going to write about a ball describe the ball is it red is it blue does it bounce is it round is it the shape of a football is it rubber is it leather Mm -hmm. just describe what you know about the topic that you want to write and then you elaborate from there that's that's the start of it and what's with me once i start that it doesn't stop i'm what they call a pantser so I write by the seat of my pants where I just take off. Now I do some outlining when needed and I do some character descriptions, things like that. Other than that, it's, I take off. I usually know the beginning, the end and the conflict of the story. I'll fill the middle in as I go. Um, for some people they need to outline. And if you need to outline, take three topics. You know, if you're going to write about a ball, describe the color, describe the, what it's made out of and does it bounce? you know, or, or the application that you can use that ball for. Can you kick it? Can you throw it? Those kind of things. But as far as you either pants or you plot. And if you plot, come up with three ideas and just go from there. It's, it's very, very simple. I think we get hung up in our head and worried about, oh, my gosh, yeah. is this going to look right? It, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It, it's you've got to, if you don't, you'll lose it. If you don't get it out of your brain and onto a page, you're going to lose it. And that's the most important thing. And I have notebooks all over this house of ideas of things that I have yet to write. I mean, I've probably got 20 book ideas and notebooks around my house that I hadn't started yet. Um, But I write them down because I know if I don't, I'll lose them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I was going to ask you that, but now you've answered it. Um, I read your mind. (laughs) Either way that you write is going to be okay. Yeah. You You can just write 
and let the story flow out of you. Or you can come up with an outline, come up with a plan, and then work your plan into a story. Right, um, and, I think, it, and that helps different kinds of people. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of fiction authors that plot, but I know many pants, you know, they write, because yeah. I look at it this way. If I, now, for example, the, the self-help book I'm, I've done, it's, I'm calling myself a planter on that one where I'm half plotting, half pantsing, um, because there's more, there's a different type of structure to that book because there's steps and there's mm -hmm. processes and where my mind may be, maybe on step five when I haven't written step one yet. And that's okay. I just have to shift the material around. Uh, so that's where that could be where sometimes people get hung up. Well, I'm not writing it in order. You don't have to write it in order. Well, you can move it around. That's what's great about Microsoft Word. You can shift paragraphs around all day long. Or uh, there's another software called Scrivener. Um, Scrivener will let you go ahead and set up chapters or topics. And then you can just move the file up and down mm. the side of the, the sidebar, you know, and it'll, once it's finished, it combines it all into your manuscript. Wow. So there's different, yeah, there's different techniques to do it, but there's no wrong way. There's no yeah. wrong, the wrong way is to not do it. That's the right way. Well, and yes. one of the things you get from Ken's community, because I've been a part of her community for probably about a year now, I am a marginal person because I don't write regularly. Um, although I write my blogs. And then, so she asked, uh, um, what have you written this week? And I always say, I wrote my blog posts. <laughs> yes, and that's great. That's part of it. It's writing for me. Uh, and at some point, those blog posts may end up being a book. Um, but that said, if you join our community, you will be with people who desire to write, who desire to um express themselves through the stories. Yes. And so um, definitely go check out Kim and check out her community. Um, Kim, what kind of people actually um, buy your coaching? Um, it, it's kind of two different groups. So it's a group of people who are in the beginning processes of where they want to write and they don't know where to start or they've started and they're hung up. And so I, I teach, there's four foundations to bestseller bound and that's writing strategy, publishing strategy, marketing, promo, advertising, and book launch. Those are the four foundations. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are in the beginning stages. And then I have some that are published who um, they publish and things just didn't work out the way that they wanted. And so I help, it's kind of right there. It's kind of kind of where they are. They're getting started or they're close to publishing or they've published. Um, and writing strategy is not craft. I, I don't, because I'm so proponent of your voice and that's what editors are for. But it's right. more on helping you get the ideas out, organizing those thoughts, staying on track, setting goals, things like that. We are the world's worst, authors are the world's worst at skip, missing deadlines. So I'm really big on trying to keep people focused on their deadline to get their book published um, because it, it, just because you when you finish the book, it's not over. You, you've still got to get it edited and pre-read and all that stuff. Oh, wow. Um, so it's usually those two groups of individuals come to me, someone who's just getting started or someone who has published and things just didn't go the way they wanted. And we kind of go back and we complete and create a new strategy for them or create a strategy from the start to move them forward. And it's, it's a much, it's a very much a learning experience. They're going to learn the processes they need to know how to do this. Yeah. And if they want to traditionally publish, I walk them through that path as well. And to getting, finding mm -hmm. a publisher. So many people are doing the eBooks now and yes. that's, it's easier and mm -hmm. um, a different way of doing things, but that's very cool. Um, yes. If any, if anybody is watching this now or watching it later, if you're watching it, on video, drop me a hashtag replay, answer the questions too. Um, if you will drop a hashtag writing tips, Kim will grab you and send you some writing tips. Yes. yes. She would be happy to do that. <laughs> and she'll send you an invite to join her community. So thank you for being here today, Kim, and talking to me about this. You have inspired me that perhaps <laughs> your voice needs to be heard in a written way and not just <laughs> on these videos interviewing people, but I love doing this and 
you guys are all so unique and I just love telling your stories. So thanks for coming and being a part of it today. Um, so next week, we're here every Monday at 1130. I'll have my son, Eric Best, on the uh, show with me. He is the newest member of my realtor team. He just got his realtor license and he's a Marine. He's no longer an active Marine, but I felt like that was a great time since Memorial Day is coming up to have my Marine come and, and introduce you to him and let him tell you what he's learned about VA loans. So if you're, um, you or somebody in your family are military and are thinking about buying or selling a house, you'll want to be a part of this show for sure next Monday, Memorial Day. You should all be home or at the lake. I hope you're at the lake. Uh, we all want to get out. Um, this has been a great show today. Kim, do you have any thoughts you want to wrap up with? Just right. That's my Just best right. Best That's best. excellent. Just right. Um, yes. You guys have a great day and we'll see you again on Monday at 1130. Until then, talk to you guys. Bye.